What's shaking everyone? Welcome back to another DMZ video. And I've actually wanted to make this video for a while now, but I wanted to make sure I did my homework. And what I wanted to talk about today is running solo. And here's the thing, I run solo quite a bit. And I really wanted to just see what it's like, you know, over like a week, just to play really hardcore solo, try to get my mind in the right place and just figure out with the way the DMZ currently is, what would the best route be to go about trying to play this game solo? What's the best, you know, missions you can get? What's the best loadout? What What's the best everything? There are a lot of different things you have to think about to be successful at the DMZ being a solo player. And of course, I'm going to try to break it down in the easiest and simplest way possible. And of course, I'll do it into chapters for you guys. Cause I just think that's the easiest way to digest a YouTube video. So we will break it down into chapters, but there's a lot of things you guys have to think about. Just like thinking about maybe subscribing to the channel. I have to do this. I'm sorry. It's, it's part of the YouTube contract. If you enjoy the content, not now, maybe later, think about subscribing, hitting the bell for notifications on my next video and let's get going. <laughs> I know it doesn't seem like a big deal, but we have to talk about what operator you are going to choose to run with. So I've been running with the Burger Town operator this whole time, up until three hours of my stream ending yesterday. Up until then, I was using the Burger Town operator and he sticks out like a sore thumb. Let's be honest, he sticks out like crazy. He has a white and red shirt on. So then I moved over to the Canadian guy and of course you gotta love him. You know, he has the big Canadian patch on his shoulder. And then today actually Voss, uh, one of my viewers was kind enough to give me the Sasquatch skin for the Canadian. So I'm using that now, but you have to think about you trying to blend in more with either the environment or with the AI. It's really important to kind of look like just another AI to be honest. So when you're picking out your operator, just Try not to stick out like a thor sore thumb. And if you do want to, th there's nothing wrong with that. You want Burger Town, play with Burger Town. But as a solo player, you're just kind of giving yourself another disadvantage. You also have to be realistic about the missions you're going to be choosing, right? Let's say we go to White Lotus and you want to complete Air Supremacy. So you have to control three SAM sites at once. You're not going to do that alone, right? You're just not. So you have to be realistic about which ones you have to find a party for, maybe make some new friends, or you have to be like, you know what? I'm just gonna do this with some randoms and try to get lucky. Maybe they have the same mission as I do. And just to let you guys know, if you do just party up with a random team, when you press Y, I don't, I don't know what it is on the controller, but if you press Y while you're playing with a team, you can see everyone's missions at once. This really helps out when you just do a random squad and you're like, oh, me and this guy have the same quest to do this. You know, you can VoIP and say, do you want to do it? But when you're picking out missions, you just have to be realistic and know that they're going to take a lot longer than if you did have a couple of buddies. Because remember, if they're doing the same tasks as you, then they just overlap each other, right? So say extract 13 gas grenades, flash grenades 11, and snapshot grenades seven. This has been taking me a little bit of time because I just don't want to go in with those things. I like my stims and I think they're so useful again for solos, but we'll get to that in a second. But say you were with a buddy that has the same task as you and he does say four gas grenades, you do four. Well, that counts as eight then. So it's, it is better to have a buddy for sure, but just know that if you are going to be doing a lot of solo runs, don't beat yourself up for, you know, the missions taking a little bit longer than they should just realize that you can tell your buddies hey guess what i did them solo so this is going to get spicy in the comments a lot of people are passionate about the tactical the lethal the field upgrade they use and this is just my two cents uh the only thing i would ever change to be honest is the field upgrade and that's with the revive pistol but we'll talk about that later but let's start with the tactical that i choose as a solo player i think the king of all kings for tactical is the stim it just comes in handy so much and especially when you are uh coupling it with the munitions box that i'm going to talk about later it's just so good i know you can find these a lot even especially around ammo caches but they're just so good to have now you could make an argument with the spotter scope i do get it actually a lot of these items to be honest are very very just handy it's handy to have a lot of these items but i just 
I don't see anyone arguing uh, aside from stims to get something else if you're a solo player. Like I can't see an argument of you using anything but stims if you're solo. And that's just me, right? The lethal is where I think we're going to have maybe an argument in the in the comments down below. But again, no one is wrong here. It's just everyone's preferences. But my preference is always Semtex. I just think it comes in handy a lot more than, say, the throwing knife. And that's what I see everyone telling you to use, right? I see a lot of people saying, hey, you don't have to go in with a gun. You can just use the throwing knife you know karate chop someone with it and then you can just get their gun and and get going on your merry way listen you should always be bringing a gun into this game there's no reason to have gear fear right gear fear isn't in this game right now because even if you have no contraband weapons and you're you know insured guns on cooldown well the game gives you this little button you can toggle this little prompt and you get free weapons you go in with free weapons so why wouldn't you always go in with some sort of gun into the dmz even if you're solo and scared you know it, it, it just doesn't make sense to me but i get it the throwing knife is good for meleeing people also i'm pretty sure it's a two hit melee for the armored guards and it is good you know like you can just throwing knife those basic guards in in one knife and you can pick it up but i'm telling you semtex comes in handy so much more right so when you see a riot shield guy and you're alone, you're going to be so happy of Semtex. Or if there's a reinforcement helicopter coming at you, right? And you're already pretty bunged up and need to go get more plates from a buy station. You're going to be super happy you get that Semtex, eh? Because then as they're propelling down from their little stupid ropes, you're just throwing some Semtex into the middle and you're going to get four, five, six kills in these grenades. And you're going to be so happy. Now you can just run away and try to get some sort of plates from this buy station or it's also another handy thing to have anything that's an area of effect so your semtex your frag grenades your molotov cocktails anything like that that pushes the ai to reposition or do something so that you can reposition right so say you're pinned down somewhere you need to get to another area so that you can at least maybe armor up or something some sort of a grenade or molotov or thermite something to make the ai reposition is going to be your best friend in those scenarios so my two cents this is just me semtex is the winner i like us doing these because i know in the comments down below you guys are going to have different opinions and i love hearing that i'm not going to lie to you i love hearing different opinions uh, about how people play and and the way they see it through their eyes so the munitions box for the field upgrade is just what i always use i like it with the stims and the semtex because right away you can get uh an extra stim and an extra semtex and also the other thing i like is that unless you're using an ar an lmg or a shotgun you don't find ammo that often for your other guns right your smg your uh your battle rifle and your sniper you are going to find ammo around the map and from ai but not as often as those other ones right so a munitions box just comes in handy if you are using those a deployable cover though someone was talking to me about that the other day and i kind of agree if you are solo a deployable cover is another good field upgrade right you know you a lot of times are in nowheresville say you are going from point a to point b there's not much cover AI like they do come out of nowhere they just spawn randomly and start shooting at you you you've got nothing to hide behind deployable cover would come in handy and the other one actually is battle rage right so this would come in handy again for AI but more importantly if you do come across a three man uh, a, a squad of real players battle rage will get you out of that situation a lot faster than just trying to to run and here's the thing you're going to run a lot faster than them so you're going to get out of the way you're going to try to break line of sight as soon as possible and then hide wherever you can so battle rage also is a good field upgrade to have as a solo but for me it's just the munitions box and and that's again that's just my choice now we are using our imagination here and pretending like I don't have the armor carrier or the self revive or the medium backpack. We're pretending like we're about to go into our first DMZ run fresh with just, you know, your stock backpack, stock armor, right? 
So the gun I'm going to be choosing isn't actually the one that you can mod out your insured gun. We're not using that. The insured gun is not what we're using in our first run. We're actually going to be using whatever contraband weapon we have lying around and we want to use. And the reason for this is because I'm not going to I'm not going to be using my insured gun on a run where I don't have uh, better armor or at least the, the revive pistol or a self revive. And I'll explain that to you in what I do in my first run. But right now, what I want to tell you guys is just pick out a gun that you enjoy, you know, something, you know, hopefully something silenced, of course, if you have that, but it's really hard to find a gun that's silenced right away. So I'm just going to pick something that I, I'm pretty comfortable with, probably the Fennec or even the Lockman's really nice. And I'm going to go in with that because your first run again, you're going to be wanting to get specific things and you want to make it a snowball of a run. So you're all juiced up. You're ready for your first run. You're saying to yourself, listen, I'm going to be the best solo DMZ player there is. I'm going to rip Almazra apart. You're like juice. But you know what? Let's slow it down for two seconds because it's just your first run. And we're just actually looking for these four items. So the four items we're going to be looking for is definitely better armor. We're definitely going to want better backpack and we are going to want a self revive and or a revive pistol. And more importantly, you want at least better armor and one of the two revive items. If you know, more importantly, keep stacking them, right? You can't get enough revives because you have to remember that if you get downed, it's game over. You're done for. So stacking as many of these is very, very important. And the best place to actually find revive pistols or self revives are actually going to be the bathrooms of all these houses you're going through. And trust me, there's a ton of bathrooms in everywhere you go and not many people search them. So you're going to want to go through the bathrooms and look at the first aid kit on the wall or the medicine cabinet. You're going to find those items there. Trust me. And then also the bigger backpack and the bigger armor is going to be able to be found. The best places are going to be the lockers that you see in like warehouses and stuff like that. But you have to remember also there's a buy station. So if you just collect a couple of things, you can get them from buy stations and every single one does have better armor and a better backpack there. They don't always have the self revive, but sometimes they do. But I know for a fact, hundred percent, every single buy station will have better armor for you and a better backpack. And don't beat yourself up if you do find these things after you buy them. It was, it's really important that you get these, right? And then after you get these items, you're going to want to start stacking up uh, armor plates and self revives as many as you can find extra. Those are your two things that you need to be finding right away for run number one. And then after that, we're going to be able to actually use the insured gun, that fancy gun of yours. So let's go talk about that. So you just got out. You might have a self revive or at least, like I said, you want a revive pistol and you want that bigger armor and maybe even a backpack, right? But if you have armor and at least one self revive, go treat yourself to using the insured slot. You know, go build a weapon, build whatever weapon you want. I'm not going to sit here and tell you it needs to be an RPK or a attack 56 or whatever right now meta is. What I will say is to think about these three things. So I want you to think about these three things when building a gun. Number one, the optic. You want it to be a medium range optic, something like a four times, maybe a five times, but something that you can give yourself distance when you're fighting the AI. And if you do miss a couple of shots or you, you, you know, they do come rushing at you, you can at least retreat and again, get some distance and then do the same thing over again. Right? The second thing you're going to want a hundred percent on the gun is a suppressor. It's really important. A suppressor works so well against AI. It's actually, it's actually quite ridiculous. You could be, there could be an AI next to another AI and you shoot one of them. As long as you're suppressed, they didn't hear it or see it. You know what I mean? It's, it's really important. You have a suppressor on whatever gun you're building. And then the third thing I'm going to tell you is the biggest magazine you can, that doesn't really put too many negatives on the gun in this game mode. Reloading is your enemy. Okay. Reloading is your enemy. You should remember that because whenever you're in a reload animation, you are now so vulnerable to be shot at and there's no cancel animation here. So it, it's like if you're using an LMG, right? And we all do this. We're all guilty of this. You shoot one or two guys 
and then you just press reload because it's it's just a reflex and then you go through that two-year animation of you reloading an lmg and then you're you're stuck in it and because there's no cancel animation you're just stuck in this infinite loop of showing the bullets and putting them over the gut it's annoying but when you're building the gun i just want you to think about those three things so now you're on run number two you're jacked you're you're feeling good I don't want you to have a false sense of security just because you have a self revive now and your insured gun, right? Just because you have these two things doesn't mean you can play sloppy. It means you have to play even more carefully because you have a lot more on the line now. And remember one self revive and one revive pistol isn't a ton. So as you're doing probably your missions, right? You're probably wanting to do your faction mission on run number two, or at least try to get some of it done. Just remember that you always want to still be searching those bathrooms for the self revives or the revive pistols because they're just so important to hoard in your backpack as you keep going here. This is definitely where you want to keep snowballing though, right? If you do have only a two plate carrier armor, try to find a three. If you ha don't have that medium backpack yet, try to find that. Just definitely take your time though. You're just because you have an a, a modded out weapon and a self revive doesn't mean you're terminator okay you have to keep playing smart and you have to keep playing on the defensive never start playing super aggressively because that's how you die as a solo player I, I i can't say that enough just play always defensively also if you are in the neighborhood of an extract and you feel like you had a great run and you're like you know what i still have a self revive on me and maybe a revive pistol Let's just reset spaghetti. It's always a good idea. There's nothing wrong with taking an extract. Now, let me tell you some advice I can give you when you are solo and you do have to take the extract. Extracting solo is always a scary thing, right? Because you never know who's hiding in extract camping. You don't know what kind of AI is going to pop out from nowhere and just try to kill you. But the exciting part is, I'll tell you this right now, there is sniper glint. So if there is, you know, some sort of person just camping the area, you'll probably be able to see them. But if I were you, I would just take a second and just look at your surroundings, right? Just try to get somewhere that has cover. Take a look at the, you know, your surroundings. Just, just, you know, take that extra two seconds that you would probably not have to if you were in a group and, and just really look at your surroundings. The other thing I will say is it came from actually one of my tips videos. If you want, you can go back and check out this video somewhere around here I'll, I'll i'll drop what the thumbnail looks like but it it's just a, a tips video i had and and this tip was you know when you get an armored truck get go to the extract pop the extract and then just keep driving <laughs> right like that you're in an armored truck you have a greater chance of not dying while you're in that truck than maybe being out trying to see if the the helicopter is coming or not coming i'm telling you right now if you can get your hands on an armored truck going the extract is going to really help you out here and last and not least i've got one other thing i want to talk to you about okay one last thing i want to talk to you about places you should not be going at on El Mazra as a solo player i hate these places i seem to always die at these places when i'm solo they're just a no-go so let's go take a look at some of those places so i'm going to tell you my two places that i never go to even if there's an extract there if i'm solo but i want to hear what your places that you don't go to are like where do you find that you have the worst luck for me it's the observatory and it's caves for some reason these two places i'm just i just always die at like i don't know what it is i have the worst luck at these places it's just there's tons of AI. They always go rampant there. I just stay away from these locations if I'm solo. This was a longer video. I'm not going to lie to you. I didn't expect it to be this long, but I just started talking and I started being like, oh, and this and this. So thank you so much for watching it. Seriously, if you made it to this point in the video, there's not many of you. Trust me, there, there's going to be like 10 people that get to this point in the video. If you're one of the 10, what I want you to do in the comments down below, Tell me the musician or the band you've been listening to lately, just because I always love finding new music. And especially while I'm editing these videos, I listen to music. So tell me what you've been jamming out to so I can listen to it and maybe get a new playlist going. Thank you so much. If you did make it, listen, remember to subscribe to the channel, hit the bell. It's free for you guys. It does mean the world to me. 
and I, it seems like a lot of people are liking these DMZ videos so I'm gonna try to keep putting out as many as I can and yeah thank you guys thank you so friggin much and until next time I'll talk to everyone later